In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get Ubuntu 20.04 LTS up and running on a Windows 10 laptop. To do that, we're going to use a VMware Workstation Player, which is free virtualization software. You could use VirtualBox if you prefer, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a VMware Workstation Player, free software from VMware. I'll show you in a separate video how to get Ubuntu up and running using VirtualBox. Okay, so let's get started. Now in this example, I'm doing everything on this Windows 10 laptop. I'm controlling the Windows laptop from my Mac using VNC, but everything is being done on the Windows 10 laptop. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is download VMware Workstation Player. To do that, go to vmware.com, click on Downloads, go to Free Product Downloads and click a Workstation Player. At the time of this recording, the version of Workstation Player available is 15.5. Scroll down and then click Download Now. I'm gonna to navigate to my Downloads directory and click Save. In this example, once again, I'm downloading VMware Workstation Player for Windows rather than Linux. The size of the download is 146 meg in size, so you just need to wait for that download to complete. The software is downloaded, so I'm gonna show it in folder. So this is the VMware Workstation Player software that I've downloaded. I've actually already downloaded Ubuntu in preparation for this video. That's 2.6 gig in size, so you may wanna download that in the meantime. So let's do that. Go to ubuntu.com, click download. I wanna download the Ubuntu desktop. The reason why I wanna download the desktop is that I want a graphical user interface. So I'm gonna click on 20.04 LTS. Software starts downloading. I'm gonna click save. And as you can see, the software is downloading. Now this mirror is quite slow. It's gonna take an hour to download. So what I'll do actually is just cancel that download because I've pre-downloaded the software. It can take this a while to download depending on which mirror you get. So what I've found is sometimes just try and download it again and you'll get a better mirror or you'll be able to download it directly from Ubuntu. But be aware, 2.6 gig in size. Okay, so at this point I've got my VMware player software and I've got my Ubuntu ISO. I'm gonna double click on the VMware player executable. Now Windows complains that this isn't a Microsoft verified app. I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna click install anyway. I'm gonna click yes to allow VMware to make changes to my computer. And as you can see, the VMware installation has started. And here's the installation wizard. It's a very simple installation. I'm basically gonna use the defaults. So I'm gonna click next. I'm gonna accept the license agreement. Make sure that you read through this and are happy with the contents and then click next. I'm gonna leave the installation directory at default, click next. I'm not going to join the VMware Custom Experience Improvement Program, but I'm gonna allow the software to check for updates on startup, click next. I'm gonna allow it to create the following shortcuts and click next. Before I click install, I'm going to open control panel, go to network and internet, network and sharing center, change adapter settings, and what you'll notice here is I have various network adapters, but this is my wireless connection. That's the important one. That's actually my wireless connection to get to the internet. That's how I'm controlling this laptop. What you'll notice is there's a virtual box network interface card, but there's no VMware one. What will happen now is when I click install, it'll install the software, but it'll also install network interface cards, so that's normal behavior. So you can see it's installing virtual network drivers, and there you go, there's my VMware virtual ethernet adapter. So two network adapters have been added. I'll click finish to complete the VMware installation, and I'll close this. So now I've got a VMware workstation player icon on my desktop, I'll double click on that, and as you can see, VMware Workstation Player has started and it says non-commercial use only. Now I've previously installed VMware Workstation Player on this computer, so I didn't get a pop-up. When you install it for the first time, 
you'll get a pop-up where you'll have to agree to using this for non-commercial use. VMware Workstation Play is free for non-commercial use. So if you're doing labs or studying, this is great software to use. As you can see, I've already got some virtual machines which I installed previously, but that's not what I'm gonna boot up in this example. What I'm gonna do here is go to Player, File, New Virtual Machine, and I'm gonna browse to my Ubuntu desktop ISO and click Open. Now what's great here is Ubuntu 64, but 2004 is being detected and we can use the easy installation. This basically allows you to get the operating system up and running very, very quickly. So I'm gonna simply click Next, specify my full name, specify my username, and specify my password, and click Next. What's the name of my virtual machine? I'm gonna change this to Ubuntu 64-bit 2004. I'm gonna leave the installation directory at default and click Next. Now, how much disk space do you want? 20 gig is typically enough, but I'm gonna set this to 40, and I'm gonna set it to use a single virtual disk. By default, it splits the virtual disk into multiple files, which makes it easier to move the virtual machine to a, another computer, but may reduce performance. So I'm gonna use a single file rather than multiple files, now VMware Player is clever enough to only allocate the needed disk space for this virtual machine. So it doesn't allocate the full 40 gigs in one go. It allocates what it needs, let's say five gig, and then it dynamically expands that as you install applications or as Ubuntu needs more disk space. I'm gonna click next. Now some defaults have been set here. It's using NAT as an example, but what I'm gonna do is customize the hardware and I'm gonna change this to use bridged. Basically, I'm gonna bridge this to my wireless network adapter. That means that the virtual machine will get an IP address in the same subnet as my Windows computer. So on Windows, if I open up command prompt, ipconfig shows me that this is the IP address used on the wireless adapter. If I use NAT, I won't get an IP address in this range, I'll get an IP address in a different range. So rather than doing that, I'm gonna use bridged. Now these are some changes that I'd highly recommend that you make before you boot up your virtual machine. First thing is change the amount of RAM. By default, it's two gig. Now that'll depend on your computer. So if I look at my PC, in this example, I've got a laptop with an i7 CPU, eight gig of RAM, 64 bit version of Windows 10. So if you can allocate more RAM to this, you should be okay with two gig, but I'm gonna increase this to make it quicker. Now, something you may also wanna do is change the number of processor cores. By default, it's two, but you may, as an example, wanna make it four or more. Once again, this depends on the hardware that you have available in your computer. If you're going to run virtual machines within this virtual machine, you need to enable nested virtualization. So click this checkbox, virtualize Intel VTX or AMD V. If you're not sure what that's about, don't worry, that's only required if you wanna nest virtual machines within this virtual machine. So once again, going back to network adapter, we've set that to bridged. I'm gonna click close and I'm gonna click finish to start this up. The virtual machine is booting up and I'm asked, do I wanna install VMware tools for Linux, I'm gonna do that. So as you can see, the Linux tools are being downloaded and it's checking the disk. I'm gonna click yes to allow VMware to make changes. Now I'm told that easy install requires an internet connection, so that's fine. So I'll close this. And as you can see, Ubuntu is being installed. I don't know if you heard that, but it played a little jingle and now it's verifying the installation configuration. Now, because I'm using the easy install, I basically don't have to do anything. You could just leave this now and go and get a coffee while it installs. It does a whole bunch of things, including copying files, sets up the entire system for you, basically, rather than a traditional Ubuntu installation where you have to answer a whole bunch of prompts, VMware's made this very, very simple. Now, one thing to be aware of is it's downloading additional files from the internet here. 
So you can see it's retrieving additional files and downloading them. So be aware that it is gonna download additional files and install them if you use this easy installation method. So you download the initial ISO, but be aware that it's also gonna download additional files during this installation process. Once the installation has completed, the virtual machine is rebooted. And as you can see, I've now got an Ubuntu virtual machine running within VMware Workstation Player on a Windows 10 computer. I'll select my name, put in my password. And as you can see, I can log in. I'll resize this because it's too small. I can connect various online accounts. I'm gonna skip that. You can keep your computer secure by applying some updates that would normally require restarts. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna click next. I'm not gonna send my information to Canonical. Click next. I'm not gonna enable location services. Click next. And I'm told that I'm ready to go. I can install applications as an example, such as Visual Studio Code or Skype, Spotify and others, but I'm gonna click done to complete my installation. Now I'm told that there's an update. So I'm gonna install that, so I'm gonna click install it now. I need to put in my password, so I'm gonna do that. Notice I can resize my Ubuntu virtual machine. You can see here that the software is being downloaded in the background. But what I'll do here is go to Applications and search for Terminal. I'll zoom in here to make it bigger and easier to read. Maximize it and notice my username is David at Ubuntu. I need to use the sudo command to run commands as root. So as an example, if I type IP address, I can see my IP address this is the IP address of the PC 192.168.124. It's a slash 24 mask. Now that's in the same subnet as my Windows computer. So if I type IP config on Windows, this is the IP address of my Windows computer and I should be able to ping my Ubuntu virtual machine, which I can. So I'm pinging from Windows to my Ubuntu virtual machine. My Ubuntu virtual machine, as an example, can ping google.com. I could ping other websites on the internet, say cisco.com, and that works. Clear clears the screen. Software is still being installed in the background, but as an example, on my Mac, so this is my Mac, I should be able to ping that Ubuntu computer, which I can. So I'm pinging from my Mac across wireless to the Ubuntu virtual machine hosted on Windows. Back on Ubuntu, I'm gonna type apt install, open SSH server to install a SSH server. Now, notice the problem. I need to be root to install that. So I'm gonna type sudo apt install, open SSH server, put my password in, but notice it's locked at the moment because of this installation that's taking place. So I'll need to wait for this installation to complete. So notice once that completed, I can install my open SSH server. So that's now installed. I can restart my computer, but I'm not gonna do that now. So once again, I'll clear the screen. What I typed was sudo apt install open SSH server to install the SSH server on this Ubuntu computer. IP address once again shows me my IP address, which is 192.168.124. On my Mac, so I'm on my Mac at the moment, I'm gonna SSH as David to 192.168.124. I'm gonna accept the public key and I'm gonna log in. And notice I've SSH'd from my Mac across wireless to that Ubuntu computer running on the Windows laptop. So LSB-A shows me the release of Ubuntu that I'm using. I could do that directly within the terminal. I am SSHing from my Mac once again to that Ubuntu computer. I'll restart my computer now that the updates have been installed. VMware reboots and boots up Ubuntu. Okay, I'm gonna log in.
And there you go. Now, if I start Terminal as an application, I can right click here and add it to favorites. And that pins it to the left hand side. So if I want to start that again, I can simply select it that way. I can open up Firefox to browse the internet. So as an example, I can from within Ubuntu browse to the Ubuntu website. So I have internet access on this Ubuntu virtual machine. I could click Ubuntu software to install various software components. Whole bunch of options available here, but what I'll do is search for VS Code. Select Visual Studio Code and click Install to install it on my computer. So very similar to Mac, very similar to Microsoft, Ubuntu has this sort of app store that allows you to download and install applications. Okay, so that's now installed. So what I can do is show applications, VS Code, select that. And notice I'm now running Microsoft Visual Studio Code on Ubuntu running within VMware Workstation Player running on a Windows 10 computer. Now to turn this off, I'm gonna to go to the top right hand side and click Power Off Logout. And I'm gonna power off the virtual machine, click Power Off, and that will power down or power off my virtual machine. I'm told that the following devices can be connected to my virtual machine. I'm gonna click OK. And as you can see there, my Ubuntu virtual machine has closed. I could double click on VMware Player, select Ubuntu, and I can click play to start it up once again. I'm told that this device is available. Do I wanna connect it next time? I'm gonna say no. Virtual machine is now booting up. And there you go. I can select my user account and put in my password to log in. Okay, so in this video, I showed you how to download VMware Workstation Player, how to install that, how to download Ubuntu, and how to install Ubuntu running within VMware Workstation Player. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal. I wanna wish you all the very best.